Welcome to Vision Sunday. Yeah, this is uh, this is something new that we're that we're doing, uh, but it's something that we would like to do uh, at least once a year, and to just take a time to share the vision that God has given us. How many of you guys know that God shows us the things that He wants us to do? Did you know that? Amen. We're gonna get that taken care of here in just a second. I'm gonna turn off. In fact, I can talk. There you go. You wanna take care of it? Sure. So um, Vision Sunday um, is, like Jay said, something new. And when we were talking, I said, honey, we're doing this in October, you know. And we kind of laughed. And we don't really know when when our our year, calendar year, I think as youth pastors, just always was September. Everything just started in September. Um, So we may be doing Vision Sunday back in January or coming up in January as well. We don't know. But we're just doing it now because we didn't just want to keep putting it off. So Vision Sunday is really a time that we get to just share what the Lord is not just stirring in us, but cast the vision um, to you guys so that you can catch it. Because we're in this together. I think we say that all the time. We're in this together. If you're part of this church family, if you come on a regular basis, you're part of the Chapel Valley family. And so what we want to make sure is that we are making it clear where we're headed, not just so we're saying this is where we're going, but so you can partner along with us um, because we believe that you play an integral part in that. God has already done so much within this last year, and we're so thankful for the things that he's done. Um, but we also know that we, like, there's like certain phrases you kind of hear, but we really believe it. We believe that we've only like scratched the surface of it because it says that he's, he's perfecting us until when? Until he returns. And so until that time comes, there's a lot that he wants to get done and accomplished in and through us. So our heart is that you guys will um, not just hear fancy words or see it and say like, oh yeah, that's cool and it's agreeable. But our heart is that through, um, by the revelation of the Holy Spirit, that you will catch something about what your part is here at our church. Um, So we believe that um, the Holy Spirit will show you some next steps. Um, We are going to have at the end, uh, we'll have a response card. So they're Vision Sunday response cards, and they serve for multiple reasons. Um, Number one, at the end, if you are interested in becoming a member or um, you want, you'll agree with it, we'll walk you through this. That is actually on the back of the card, and we will give it to you. What we didn't want to do is how we normally put them on the seats and everyone fills them out and then tosses them in. We didn't want that to happen this time, so we'll give them to you at the appropriate time. If you're a visitor, we are so glad glad you're here. Welcome. We, we don't want to forget um, that this, even though it's family time, um, we're so glad that you could be a part and see what the things uh, that the Lord has in store for us as Chapel Valley. So even if you're a visitor, we do ask that you would fill out the front part of this card with your information because we capture everyone's information and that helps us better serve um, you guys. So if, either way, when you get one, please fill one out in the front. And so our heart for, for you guys today is that you hear the Holy Spirit speak to your heart and that you would know God's plan for this church, but also that you would know what your next steps are. And so we believe that the Lord's going to speak to you today. If, do you believe that today? Amen. Hey, can we do this real quick? You guys seem just, you guys don't seem happy enough. Can we just put a big smile on our face? Look at the person next to you and say, he's got something he's for got you. He's got something. Just going to turn the radio. So uh, we're going to get started this morning. We have some, uh, some videos that, that we uh, prepared for you guys. And so we're going to talk today, get started by talking about our mission, our ministry model, um, and, and who we are. Let's go ahead and show that. We consider our mission our primary assignment from God. Our ministry model is how we carry out that assignment. Simply put, it's what we do and how we do it. Our mission is reaching and equipping people to live the life God has prepared for them. So when people come to Jesus, discover the endless treasures available in Christ, and live the life that he has prepared for them, not only will they be equipped to do what he has called them to do, but they will live a life that is sent and on mission for him. Our ministry model is how or through what means we do that. We do this through services, discipleship, ministry opportunities, and teams. Services are our large group gatherings, most often on Sundays, where God's presence and word moves our hearts to continue to follow his plan for our lives. Discipleship is where real life change happens. Most often in the five levels of Operation Solid Lives, 
the Young Adults Internship Program, Madison ELM, and intensive learning courses through Spirit Life Institute. Ministry opportunities are places where hands-on ministry happens and where we put into action the things that we have learned and discovered. This often happens through events, outreaches, community functions, and other gatherings. Teams are the amazing men and women who are used by God to serve people in services, discipleship, and ministry opportunities. So, services, discipleship, ministry opportunities, and teams. That's how we reach and equip people to live the life God has prepared for them. The Chapel Valley IC is a church that only God can build, where he gets to do what he wants to do, and where he receives all the glory for its fruitfulness. It is a church where people are constantly being saved, delivered into wholeness, filled with the Holy Spirit, and passionate about reaching others for Christ. It is a church that functions in such size and scope that it cannot be explained any other way than a powerful move of God. The Chapel Valley IC is a church that overcomes and lives above ethnic, gender, cultural, economic, and generational boundaries and limitations. Where the love of God and the spirit of unity fosters an environment where all can experience meaningful relationships. It is a church full of people who live full of the Holy Spirit and move in His power in their everyday lives with humility, love, and submission, where everyone is a minister of the gospel, growing as disciples and bringing their portion with a servant heart. It is a church where children and youth are viewed as fully enfranchised ministers who move boldly and confidently as giant slayers for God. The Chapel Valley IC is a church in constant motion where God leads the various activities like a symphony, where the very atmosphere is charged with a tangible presence of God. It is a church where heaven and earth meet, where members arrive long before starting time and stay long after conclusion to offer themselves in worship to God where God's tangible presence brings order, peace, and breakthrough. It is a church where the uncompromised Word of God is taught, where understanding of truth floods the people, bringing wisdom, understanding, answering challenges, and releasing innovative ideas. The Chapel Valley IC is a church that takes the message of Jesus Christ into its surrounding communities and around the world through media broadcasts, training, outreaches, missionary sponsorship, and quality resources. It is a church where the hungry are fed with the Word of God, with God encounters, and with food that is regularly and supernaturally multiplied to meet the needed demand. It is a church that receives people from all around the world to experience God's glory, to be trained by God's anointing, and be set forth by divine commission. It is a church that has supernatural influence with governments and leaders. It is a church that inspires other ministries and believers to take God at His word and allow God to be God. The Chapel Valley IC is a church full of spiritually mature people who give honor, desire excellence, value trust, ignore criticism and arguments, and are wise to Satan's tactics of breeding disunity to stop God's blessing. It is a church that has no lack because it is a giving church full of good and faithful stewards who God can trust to share His abundant resources with others. It is a church filled with people of prayer, fervent, believing prayer, prayer that gets results that money cannot buy. The Chapel Valley IC 
is a church made up of people who have such a desire for a move of God that they are willing to do any job, pay any price, and even forfeit personal ambitions to help God accomplish His plan on the earth. It is a church that cannot be stopped because God is the driving force. It is so beyond human ability, ingenuity, or planning that God gets all of the glory. This is the church God sees. He has set it in my heart, and I will follow God and obey His voice until everyone can see the Chapel Valley Church I see.
over. It's like a it's like a journal reading almost. Like we were look, talking about our journals, but it's like that type of thing where you can go back and see the things that God has spoken and the things that he's doing. And I feel like it's just a, a video version, a video blog for me or something just to watch often over and over and over to be reminded of the things that he's done. I think some of you have been watching it over and over and over. It's got a, it's got a few views. Um, hey, before we move on, I did kind of want to just recap. Can we just thank the Lord for what he has in store? Can we just thank him for that? You know, I don't know if you noticed this, but the Chapel Valley IC, that's the vision that the Lord has put on our heart, hearts to come to pass for the church. And uh, we're not stopping until we see those things happen, right? And so there's all these things. And a few weeks ago, I was praying through that, and the Lord was showing me we have the words that the Lord has shared with us just over the past year have all been in direct connection to that vision. Did you guys, have you guys recognized that? That those are the things that we've been talking about and preaching about. And so the Lord clearly wants to bring these things to pass. And he's looking for a people that will believe it and trust in him. I don't think we can get this fixed, can we? No? There we go. We're switching to the handheld. So I did want, though, to just kind of recover. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught the mission and the ministry model that, that the Lord has set in place for us. Our mission is reaching and equipping people to fulfill the life that God has prepared for them. That's good, right? Reaching and equipping. That's what we're about. That's what we do. Everything that we say yes to will reflect that, okay? And there could be some good things that we have to say no to because it's not what the Lord's asked us to do. But I did want to just share the, five, uh, the four ways that, that we are to do that. Number one was services. That is one of the ways that we believe the Lord wants to equip you to fulfill the plan that he has for our lives. How many of you guys know that the large group gatherings where we come together and we come into his presence, we worship him and, and we hear a word from the Lord. How many of you guys know that's not easily, easy to replace? We can't just put on a TV and just watch a message and say, I did church for the day, right? It requires loving people and serving and ministering and all those other things. And so services, we believe, is one of the key ways that we are equipped to live how God has, the life that God has prepared. Amen? The other way, the second way was discipleship. I love that number of how many people went into OSL, Operation Solid Lives. I think that that is just so encouraging. Can we just thank the Lord for that? Yeah. That's incredible. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but we have, starting next week, Operation Solid Lives Level 1 and 2. If you have not taken Level 1, get in there. What is the deal, yo? Get into Level 1. It will change your life. And it's not just about revelation. Listen, you may already know a lot of the things that are being talked and spoken in there, but how many of you guys know when your heart gets filled with the Word of God and you set that side of time and you lay down other things, how many of you guys know God honors that and He becomes way more real to you than He has maybe in a long time? Amen? Amen. So get in to Operation Solid Lives. If you've done Level 1 before, do it again. If you've done Level 2, I don't think you can do that, can you? Can you? Can. No, you can. Yeah. Have fun. Okay, do that. <laughs> level one and then level two, that's one of my favorites. We talk about the Holy Spirit and that gift, that helper that he is. And so level two, get and started with that. They start to get at the same time. Um, ministry opportunities. So, yeah, ministry opportunities is really the place where we get to um, what the equipping is for. So we don't just get equipped so that we can carry this heavy baggage and be these, like, spiritually overfed over fat spiritually people the intention of ministry opportunities is that workout like if you think about it in workout terms ministry opportunities is where you get to go and have hands-on experience of um, utilizing the gifts and the tools that the that the Lord has given you he's equipped and calls called us all our responsibility is as pastors is to equip the saints well what are we supposed to equip the saints for anyone know the work of the ministry so that's important is that it's not our, our, our responsibility as shepherds is to equip you guys to actually do the work of the ministry. And so that is, that is so that you are going out. And so we have various um, opportunities of what you can do it because I know that um, – I know some people would be like, "Oh, I don't, I don't, I'm not really good with children." That's always that. Those poor kids, they always get the, the like the shafting of things. Everyone's like, I'm, "I've been all day with kids. I don't want to be with kids." That's number one. I hear, or the other one that I hear is, "I'm not good with children." Um, both of those are are um, great. I think, I think we've had pastors that have said that. <laughs> both of those. <laughs> 
Both of those are, um, are, are really things that the enemy likes to feed. And, and so really, hands-on ministry is an opportunity for you to bring your part. And what I love about children is that they're so real, and they really do, um, they shine light on things that you don't want light shined on. It's <laughs> like they're these little truth bearers that all, they'll just say stuff. And Micah once was like, Mom, you need to listen with more intention. And I was like, oh, man. I'm and like, how do you even know that word? I know, right? <laughs> Spell it for me, and then we'll say that. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, but but um, hands, ministry opportunities, though, whatever it may be, there's lots of places. And, and I love with the Chapel Valley I see, um, it said um, that, oh, what did it say? I was going to, I kept it. I should have written it down. Um, it said, pay any price, do any job. When, you, when we are called to be ministers of Christ, there are times that we just, it's hands in all hands in all hands on deck it doesn't matter your strengths it doesn't matter your weaknesses it's there seasons where all hands are on deck and we're we're moving forward and getting things accomplished and so hands-on ministry are really those times those are the things i'm passionate about because those honestly are the places that you'll see the most growth because you encounter christ because you realize i thought i was equipped and ready for this and then you're in the midst of it and you're like jesus i need you speak i need a word this person has a situation and and it puts us in this place where we, we get connected with the Holy Spirit and he speaks and moves through us and we get to see him glorified. And so ministry opportunities are really one of the best places to get your spiritual body in shape and worked out um, because that's the, what the race is for. There's people that need to hear Jesus. There's people who need to be healed. There's people who need to know that they're part, that they're missing. There's, there's people all around us. And so those ministry opportunities um, get to be one of those places. And what I love about ministry opportunities is um, that's where I grow in humility, like 100%. That's the other place where I get to say it's actually not about me. It's not about a lot of the things that we do. We don't, we, we, we very intentionally want to make sure that our hearts are in the right place and how we communicate to even the community because we ultimately want them to know it's all about Jesus. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to bring up this conversation came up about chalk the block and, um, we just went, we did it, right? We let you guys know on, we did social media things, but we just, we just did it. And um, it later came back from a, 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 some, a community leader asked another pastor, hey, were you guys the ones that wrote the encouraging words? And um, the person was like, no, that wasn't our church. But there was something to that whole, and then, it came, then that pastor was talking to Jay, and then Jay was like, yeah, that was our church. But there's just something about doing something and being the light of Christ and praying for people and saying, Lord, it's all about your glory. It's all about your kingdom, and it's really not about me. So I love seeing Sherman Marion right there on their knees, on you know, right those messages because they're saying it's it's important to get something out here it's it's not about me it's not about my comfort it's not because i i know that sometimes getting me getting on my hands and knees can be a struggle but you know moving things being showing up um being there early doing people's laundry all of that stuff so ministry opportunities is really um is is really what what we're about and then the last one was teams, the amazing men and women of God who serve in discipleship, who serve in the services, who serve in the ministry opportunities, and to see the, the plan that God has prepared come to pass. How, can we just thank all of our teams today? Yes, we have a lot I know of a lot of you guys are in that, and we try, yeah, we try to get as many people off and into services as we can. We have a lot of people that are on teams. But listen, our services, discipleship, ministry opportunity and teams we believe that's how god's going to equip you to become the men and women of god that he's called you to be yeah. we can't we can't forfeit one we can't skip over one i like that one i don't like that one i like services i'll be at the services but i don't want no how many of you guys know that's not how it works in the kingdom right yeah we're all called to be ministers and so can we say this together say services services discipleship discipleship ministry opportunities ministry opportunities and teams and teams that's how God. That's how God is going to equip me. Is going to equip me to be a light. To be a light. And to live the life. And to live the life. He's called me to live. He's called me to live. Amen. Amen. Do you guys see this? Yeah. Are we on that? Okay. I wanted to just re quick recap that, and we got a few other things to go into. I um, move the papers appropriately. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I don't have my tablet, and I got papers everywhere. This and you and you didn't number the papers. No, I didn't number the papers. <laughs> I'm like looking through my stuff like nothing's numbered. That's all right. So uh, we wanted to just share, though, a few more results and highlights that weren't necessarily on the video. Uh, one of those is our missions giving. 
we had just a tremendous amount of missions giving in the last year. In the last year, we had $5,619 given to missions, to international worldwide giving, um, partnership with other missionaries. So can we just thank the Lord for that? Yeah. That was awesome. And just, just an update, um, Johnny and Sarah, who, who, who were with us in the summer, remember they were going to Great Britain? Mm -hmm. that, I would, it's Great Britain, That yeah. whole region kind of confuses me about what I should call it. Great Britain? The UK. The UK. The UK? I think that works, too. That's, that's it. All right. They were going to the UK. Um, they are actually um, got their tickets, and they're moving on October 4th. And so I'm um, just, days. yeah, in two days. So just continue to keep them in your prayers. Um, I know that Sarah was having some issues with her visa, which was actually what delayed her process to get, delayed their process to get out there. Um, but they are on their way moving. And so they were part of that 5,600. Yeah, and they're fully funded. Yep. And you guys were a part of that. Yeah. You guys were a part of that. So thank you. And just want to give you an update since that's happened in, in just a few days. Um, kids Church, a few a few announcements again. I, I love our kids there. Kids are fun. We were talking to some people, and they were talking about how um, when we were mentioning how when kids weren't around, when we go out to dinner, we do stuff, there's just an element of color that misses that's just gone. <laughs> like, yes, it's easier. Yes, you know, there's less of a mess. Um, but there is there is something, and I loved how the Chapel Valley IC talked about them being giant slayers, that what the kids are actually facing, what the kids are walking into, the darkness that actually surrounds them. We should, we all should have our, our, our attention to be on kids on Sunday morning, really. I mean, this isn't just something I'm saying, um, but when, but when most of your kids that you are around do not know Jesus, the place that we ought to go is into kids' church and, and, and partying and praying over them and giving wisdom to them and teaching them and, and listening to them, not just like, I'm going to tell you what to do, but listening to what's in their heart because those are the ones who I believe are going to usher in the second in, into the presence of God. I, I believe it with all of my heart. The more challenging my children get, the more I'm convinced of it because I think you cannot be this strong-willed, this stubborn, just to oppose me, right? Nope, you are, you are called to oppose the <laughs> enemy and stand up for truth. And so um, Kids Church, there's lots of great stuff that's happening in there. This was our first year that kids ever went to kids camp for a full week, which is a really big deal. Like parents, kids leaving their parents, although all of our kids were like, see ya. Like they had no problem leaving us. I don't think that they wanted to come back. There was one night I didn't know what to do. There was no interns. There was no kids. And I was like, alone. You were. <laughs> But there was four kids who went who didn't come home midweek because sometimes those things happen <laughs> where kids are just like, I need my parents. Um, and so, and not that that's bad, but we had four kids who stayed the whole week who heard from Jesus, who were baptized with the Holy Spirit, who just loved it, who, who were independent. I mean, I just think that's what we want our kids to be is independent of us. Um, so four kids went to camp. There was one Holy Spirit baptism um, in that. Three water baptisms, as we saw, which were our kids, which we were totally excited about. Uh, 29, uh, 29 children ministered to in church setting, about an average of attendance of 13 kids who come every Sunday, and um, every child has been prayed for. Every child has been every prayed week. for. Every week the kids are prayed for. They are encouraged to pray for each other, um, which is really great. And our kids are hungry. I mean, like, not just our children, but, like, our Chapel Valley kids are hungry for the Lord, and we don't want to miss this opportunity. And so if you don't feel compelled to be in kids church that's where you ought to go um, and let them teach you something and grow something but our kids volunteers um, and our kids need you you know we read in what is it in like in Joel and then I believe in Acts where it talks about in the last days right old men will, will see dreams young young children or young young men will prophesy our kids need they, they need grandparents they need people to give wisdom and impart things to them and so I can't stress that enough because it's not just babysitting we're not just trying to like hand off our kids and go um, but we really believe strongly in um, in our children and stuff so um, great things are happening there and I'll just keep plugging away we need people to love and kiss on little babies well I don't know if all parents want you kissing on babies but with parental consent with parental consent holding babies um, and, and praying for these babies and having words for these babies. I know that um, there, there's someone very special in our life who would be saying, hey, I was praying, not related, I was praying for your kids and came to Sunday. I have a word for your kid. Where's your kid? And they would track down my children and say, hey, I have a word for you. And that's what our kids need. They need to know that other people are rooting for them beyond their parents. And so great things are happening in there. But we, again, have only scratched the surface, and you have a part to do in that. Yeah. 
And, you know, I say that I've said this before, and I'll, I'll say it over and over. I believe some of our strongest prayer warriors are the kids. They pray over you, and their things just happen because they believe it. They believe it. You, they, they're taught it, and they accept it. And so uh, we love our kids' church, and we expect great things there. Uh, something else that we're very excited about uh, that is newer is Gamers Playground. And uh, about a year ago, Pastor David, who is our youth pastor, uh, felt a call to be light in darkness, to go and be light in dark places. And so we prayed about that, and he felt like that was just getting into the schools however possible. And so uh, with the Lord, they developed something called Gamers Playground, which is a school club that fills up instantly. I mean, kids are fighting over these sheets to get in, uh, to be a part of this thing, and it maxes out every week. 25 students, we can't have any more. But 25 kids every week come to this thing to play video games, to socialize, to be together, to hang out. And how many of you guys know that when Jesus is in the equations, things start to shift and things start to happen? Amen. And so that's been happening, and so that's 25 students a week. I don't even know how, and it's not the same ones every week. They have to, it's, it's a sign-up, so whoever signs up first gets in. And so I had the privilege of getting there this last Last Wednesday for the first time, and, and I was very thrilled about what I was seeing and students connecting, having a safe place, but ultimately hearing the gospel, hearing the gospel that's being preached. And so, uh, and a lot of, from what I hear, the teachers are on board. Like, the yeah. teachers love it. Like, this is like a good thing. And so we're looking to multiply that, expand that, do that at some other schools as well. Um, go ahead. So um, about March, as you, if you've been with us, obviously, we meet at the Marriott most Sundays. Um, and, and when we get a whole month, we're totally excited. Um, but we believe that, that the Lord has been stirring in us church property. Um, and church property isn't this whole thing that we believe that church property is going to fix everything. Um, but we know that with church property will come new new struggles <laughs> and um, and growing points. Uh, uh, it's not all sh sugar covered candy and gum no. drops and roses once we get the property. I, you I guys know that, right? Like you're, you're say, in this. Yeah. You, got, you guys got our back, right? Yeah. Um, and so anyways, <laughs> uh, probably about February, we, we began praying about what kind of is next. And we had felt like I had felt um, one day while driving, we were driving by this property that the Lord had said, say, declare out of your mouth, deliver Thomasville into my hands. And being filled with faith, I said, really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. And so Samantha was in the car with me, and so I just under my breath said, Lord, deliver Thomasville into my hands. <laughs> like, I was, I, was, I was a little scared because when you hear things like that, if it was the kids, they would just say it. But you start going through like the 500 reasons of why that's not the Lord and it's you and just all and on. Anyways, so we felt those. I shared with Jay and, and we were praying and um, just partnering with people in prayer that the next step was to begin to pray at Thomasville. Now, Thomasville is not for sale. Um, and we, we, did put a, we did put an offer in. But since March, we've actually been having a team of people who have been led by Mike and um, Ann Fredrickson. Can you guys wave? or? Yep. Yeah. Mike and Ann, yep, give them, a, give them hands, that's right. They have, they have been diligently leading our prayer team since March, um, that they meet twice a week, once on Tuesdays, once on Saturdays, and they just pray, and they check in with us, um, and, and they, they've had some visions, they've been sharing, um, but really they're, they're beginning to have that extension because uh, of doing what, we, what we've asked them to do, but I also believe, again, like we're saying, our job is to equip you guys that the Lord is actually moving and, and working in them too and stirring some things up in them. But Mike and Anna have been leading this prayer team um, since March, and we believe that our building is right around the corner. Um, we're, we don't just say that because that's something that we want to say because, quite frankly, not to pay any attention to it and not to say anything would be a lot easier because no one's going to be asking you, hey, where's the property? Or I thought you said. But, no, we believe strongly that our property is right around the corner and so Mike and Ann have been praying there with a team about 12 people um, and they've just been faithfully um, serving our church in that capacity um, and seeking the Lord beyond those beyond just the, the two days a week and so we just wanted to give you an update um, there really isn't a necessarily a huge update but we definitely feel that there's a stirring that things are that things are moving forward and uh, and we're ready yeah, it's only a matter of time. That's it's just right. a matter of time. It's already done. All right. And so uh, something else that we've been having the privilege of doing is missions letters. Um, we have sent over 100 letters to Foursquare missionaries around the world in the past year. 
uh, just with prayer support, with uh, just words of encouragement and affirmation. And every time, we, I, I think this has been true every year for the last three or four years that we've gone to our uh, International Foursquare Convention, that we have missionaries come up to us and say, are you the ones that sent us the letter? They were like, that's so ministered to me. Or they'll be like, that was what I needed in that moment. How many of you guys know the Holy Spirit speaks, right? Amen. And so that's, that's an encouraging thing. And so this isn't just about our church. Isn't that true? There's a, yeah. there's a global church that Jesus is building. Amen? Amen. Go ahead. Yeah, so th those, are, so those are things that we actually have the ELN students do. Um, but if you're ever interested in joining us for an afternoon to do that, um, we would love to have you there. And literally, I saw Justin the other day. He was on Foursquare um, FMI's website, and he was looking at their pictures. He had his pen there, looking at, you know, just looking. And then um, he was writing his notes, and then he'd search the next person and writing, writing their notes. And so they are deeply moved and ministered. Some other things that our ELN students do that we just wanted you guys to know, um, they do treasure hunts. And that was in the video. Treasure hunts really are, are what they sound like. They go, they, they set up, they go into a room, into our house, or um, go somewhere kind of quiet. Sometimes they separate, and they feel, Lord, what, what is it that you want us to look for? And so they'll get phrases like red hat or, um, you know, purple purse or woman. Or, yeah, and then, like, random, random things, right? You just kind of look at it in a random place to go. Then they come together, and they go, and then they pray in, pray in the spirit, and then they find those people, and then they pray. And um, treasure hunts have been, one, again, one of those things where um, they've enjoyed doing. They've had multiple fruit and results. Um, and just allowing the Holy Spirit. And really what it is is that they're intentional about just being silent and saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? Who should I be looking for today? Um, and it's always great to hear the stories. They're not always, like, great. You know, like, I've had so many times I think Stevie's been like, that person just walked away from me. Like, he was mad. Um, but it's okay. You know, we, all we got to do is just be obedient to it and uh, let, the, let the Lord do what he needs to do. And so a uh, treasure hunt have been something they've been doing. Uh, uh, um, they've also, they also do probably once a month uh, neighborhood trash pickup. And um, they go very intentionally during bus pickup or bus drop-off time, and they go pick up trash. Um, and if students are around, like little kids that live in the neighborhood, um, they have them come and help them with the trash or walk with them. If they don't have anyone, they just go and pray and walk in the neighborhood and continue to pray for favor, comp continue to pray for the people in the neighborhood. And so those are some things that our ELN students do during, um, during the week, throughout the month. If you're ever like, what do they do? Well, we have them go pick up trash. We have them do some writing. Um, and we have them do some treasure hunts. And so those are some of the um, ministry opportunities that are also available to you. We don't put them on church website um, because it does rotate with the intern's schedule. Um, but that's things that they're about, that if you ever just want to come and join them, um, where you're like, hey, you know, I, I want to go just spend some time with Kay and Justin. Um, I'm sure they would love to have you walking down the street picking up trash with them. Um, but, yep, so those are some awesome ministry, ministry opportunities that we have them do but are also available to you. And uh, a few other things that, that we have is our women's ministry that meets once a month. Uh, they meet and encourage each other and teach and uh, pray for one another. Eat. Uh, eat. Yep. We love to eat. There's food There's everywhere. There's always donkey stuff for, yeah. for coffee at the women's <laughs> ministry. And so we're super proud of our women's ministry. Yes. Uh, we have a, something called Firepower Prayer that meets every week and prays over the church and the, the people of the church and uh, gets visions and dreams and and really presses in and does some spiritual battling uh, that meets every week and we have some uh, healing team uh, which is many people trained in healing and prayer countless amounts of people that have gone out and been prayed for in jobs and workplaces and neighborhoods and towns through these times of teaching and and uh, about healing and how Jesus wants to heal and so these are things that are happening that are not just one and done okay these are happening all the time all the time like there's never a week where these things aren't happening. And so can we just thank God for all the things that he's yeah. doing? Does that get anybody a little excited? Yeah? Okay. Good. Because that's a lot of good stuff. All right. Now, um, something that we did want to bring back around, and this is something else that the Lord has done this year, is uh, something called Give God a Year. How many of you guys remember doing this, right? Give God a Year. This is something that we started on Easter Sunday, and we did it for a few weeks. I believe we, we made the opportunity available for two to three weeks to be a part of this campaign, which is about giving God our year. And how many of you guys know we don't just give God one year and we're done? 
That's not what we're saying, right? But what we are saying is that this year, we are going to give God our attention, our time, and we're going to do things that we might not normally find ourselves doing because we believe that God's going to do something. We believe God's going to do something. And so this Give God a Year, I just want to, we have these in the seats that you guys are sitting on. Um, I believe they're underneath your seats. And as, lo- as well as this response, if you did not get the opportunity to do this, we would like to extend that opportunity, and we'll collect these at the end of the service. And we ask that you sign this one, this nice four-color print one, this one right here. You sign this one, and you keep this one because it's nice. Really, all we need is you to sign and date it. And if you could also print your name on that so we can actually read it. That way we know that you have made this commitment to give God a year. But I just want to look at this. It says, we believe that you, everybody say you. You. Okay, now say me. Me. All right. We believe that you will see your life transformed as you commit your heart to partner and participate in the many great opportunities available. Here are some ways we're inviting you to give God a year. The first one, join an Operation Sod Lives discipleship class. We talked about that, right? I, I'm, I'm not kidding. It will change your life. It'll change your life. It's not about what we know. It's not about what we've been taught. It's about being filled with the word of God and the gospel. And when that happens, things shift. Things change. You don't see things the way you used to see them. You don't talk the way you used to talk. And so I would encourage you, get in an Operation Solid Lives class. Get involved in a Chapel Valley ministry. That's the teens that we're talking about, right? We believe that's one of the ways that God wants to equip you to fulfill the calling that he's, hey, he has prepared. Now, somebody might be thinking, how does my life plan that God has for me get fulfilled when I just volunteer? How many of you guys know it's not about getting a job done? It's about getting you done. And that the Lord wants to do some things. And if you ask some of our team members, have you been stretched? Have you been uncomfortable? Have you grown since you've been uh, serving and partnering? How many of you guys know they're all going to be like, yeah, right? And they don't say it out of, I don't like this. They're saying it out of, it's not comfortable to go from glory to glory. It requires sacrifice. And so teams is one of the ways. So get involved in a Chapel Valley ministry. And I'm so proud because we have a lot of people that are serving. I mean, extraordinarily high percentage of people serving. Participate in our daily Solid Life journal reading plan. We have something called our uh, Solid Life reading plan, which is in our journals. Does somebody have a journal they can just pop up? Can we just pop that up? These are our journals, and we like to read our Bibles every day. That didn't sound, let's let's fill that with faith. Every day. Every day. Every day. And this is one of the ways we do that. We have a reading plan that we like to read through together so that we can all hear the word of the Lord. We can get his word in our heart. And we like to write about the things that he's speaking to us. And these solid life journals are one of the ways that we do that. And so if you don't have one, pick one of those up at the information table. And the super cool thing about reading the journal, reading together is number one, partnering together and being like, did you read when or um, I didn't catch that. I know Jay and I were reading one day, and I thought, were we reading the same thing? Because I didn't, I didn't see that. But um, it's so cool to be talking to people um, and, and reading the same thing. Mm-hmm. There's, again, we really want unity, 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 because when there's unity, the spirit can move freely. And so, right. so we believe that really doing that together, is, is it's, not, it's not a checklist. It's not like, oh, I have to do this. But, but when we set our hearts and like, yeah, let's do this together, there's just something about, like I said, all hands on deck. There's just like, yep, we, we can accomplish this. And the promises of God are true. And they're yes right. and amen. And yep. So. Yeah, go ahead. No, that's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, regularly attend Chapel Valley Sunday services. We've been talking the last few weeks about not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as we see the day approaching. How many of you guys know we should see the day approaching? And how many of you guys know there is a day that is approaching? And that we need to be more intentional than ever before about coming together and ministering and sharing the gospel. And so regularly attending Chapel Valley Sunday services. And you may have to say no to some things to do that. I'm just going to tell you right now. And we believe that it's important every week. Why? Because the Lord's speaking. He's got stuff to say, and he's leading us in a direction. And so we would encourage you to do that. And then pray 10 minutes a day. How many of you guys know we got to pray to make it today? That's a song from my youth. Um, From my youth. From my my youngin' days. But we got to pray to the Lord. All right. 
we've got to move, we got to keep things moving. And so uh, at this time, we wanted to just to kind of give some overview of how the church is structured and how things are laid out and who does what. And how many of you guys know that's important to kind of know what's going on and who's doing what. And so we actually wanted to start today by introducing some of our council team. Um, uh, I think a couple of them aren't, uh, one, one of them is one. not here. But we have Mary Kuban. Could you just stand up and just wave? This is Mary Kuban. She is one of our council members. Yep. <laughs> Uh, we have Brian Duncan. Is He's he, right over he, here. There he is, Brian Duncan, Please. one of our council members. And Scott Deward Scott. is here. Yep, there's Scott. And then Laura Marquardt, who couldn't be here today, and she really wanted to be here. She, we saw her this weekend, and she just wasn't going to be able to make it. But the, the job of the council is to give uh, oversight and financial accountability and, and also, to a degree, praying and spiritual oversight. And so we meet with them every month going over the finances, the expenses, where the money is going, how things are being laid out. And so how many of you guys know we have good people in our church that are over this stuff, right? People that are trustworthy, people that have their house in order, people that love the Lord, amen? And so uh, we have those people to help serve us and um, to serve you guys to make sure that you are represented. Okay, these are representatives from the church that represent you in the financial decisions. Um, also, uh, at this time, we would like to introduce our pastoral team. And so our pastors, we have, it's more than just Susie and I, okay? We actually have uh, six other pastors on, on our staff. And so we would like to invite them up. And so, David, if you could go ahead and come up. Uh, Warren, uh, if you could come up as well. Andrew, Andrea, Leela and Larry. Could you guys all come up here? Can we just thank them for what they do? Yeah. I like your gear. It's a bye week. We, we don't have to freak out this week. Yeah, we can just take a week off. Um, so the role of the pastor, though, is to give uh, spiritual oversight but then also to care for the needs of the church and to be involved in the ministry leadership. And so these are the people that are praying for you, that are seeking the Lord on your behalf, and that are really invested in moving this church in the direction that the Lord is calling us to move it. And so this isn't just about the vision that Jane and Susie have. This is our vision. This is the vision that the Lord has for our church, and we're all a part of this thing. And so uh, this is uh, Pastor David. He is our, our youth pastor and of our junior high and the high school. And, um, oh, well, we can give these out now. Oh, okay. I thought we were. Sorry. Go ahead. We have Andrea. This is my mother-in-law, and she speaks Spanish. Um, <laughs> And she speaks to me in Spanish, and I understand it mostly. Yeah, and so we are so glad to have her part of the team. Pastor Warren, um, and he just joined us about a year ago, and we are so thankful for the perspective and the insight that he brings. Leela, who has been overseeing the, the ushers and some of the hospitality, um, is very prophetic. We have Larry, who is one of our solid teachers and directs our institute. And Andrew is my brother, and I love him, and he is awesome. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Pastor Andrew, the be we, have there, we are so excited about the things that God has for you because we believe that it's only just begun for you. And so these are our pastors, the ones that are partnered with us and the ones that are praying. And this month is October, and so it's actually Pastor Appreciation Month, and we just wanted to show our appreciation. And what we would like to encourage you guys is that as we go throughout this month, that you guys find ways to just show some thanks to, to our pastors. If it's taking them out to a lunch or to a coffee or shooting them a message on Facebook, thanks for all you do, or just praying for them and letting them know. Can we just do that this month? Just really thank them for the investment. It's not easy to carry a spiritual load like this. And so it's, it's important for our leaders to be built up, to be encouraged, and to be appreciated. Amen? And so we would like to, though, as a church, we would like to give you guys cards and just showing our thanks with little notes and little gifts in there. Um, but can we just thank them one more time just for all that they do? Thank you, guys. You can go ahead and be seated. Let me just say one more thing. They are not paid, okay? They do this out of their time. They do this out of the calling that the Lord has placed on their lives. And so we're so grateful and so blessed to have these guys as a part of our team. So just for time's sake, we're going to just rush through here. If you guys could just stick with us for a few more minutes. Is that good? Honestly, yes. we are going to get you out of here. We on time. will. I was. I've been. I've been watching the clock and writing him notes up here to just. We don't want. We don't want to push speed through. Um, but there are just a few more things. Hey, so if you could just bear with us for a little bit longer. It ain't easy when you're blessed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's a lot going on. Yeah. Um, 
<clears throat> we did want to just go into something that the Lord has spoken to us, and it was right around in, this, in the beginning of the year. It of was. This year. Yep. So we, as we mentioned before, and we believe you read in the word that you're supposed to take a Sabbath, right? We're all supposed to do that weekly. Um, and so that's just a commandment from the Lord. Um, but something that Jay and I really attend, we try to tend to is also giving ourselves a personal retreat um, once once a year. And um, we, we go separately because it's kind of like, what is the Lord going to say? And then we come back and share what the Lord has been stirring in us. And so um, when we did, as Jay mentioned, the beginning of the year, we sat down. He and I went away after we went our separate times, went together and said, okay, well, what, what did you feel like the Lord was saying? And so as we kind of work through the, the, the wording of everything. There were three words that we felt like the Lord had said that he uh, wanted us to focus in for this next year. Now, like I said, um, not everything, when we think year, I think we think calendar year, year to year. Um, we're not really putting a time frame on it. Um, however, we'll, back in, in the beginning of the year, Jay and I will again go separately to go spend time with the Lord. And if he directs us differently, then, then we will go differently. But for right now, um, the, the three things that the Lord has asked us to focus on as we transitioned a, as a new pastors, um, the words were align, establish, and health. Um, the, align, establish, and health. Those were the things, the three things that when he was speaking to us that he wanted us to give attention to. And so, um, I, did you bring up your journal, honey? You can talk about, I may grab mine quick. Yeah, the, the words were align, establish, and health. And, and really it was about the Lord. That Those are the things that he wanted to do, and those were the things that he wanted us to be about in this next season of the church. And, and a lot of times our knee-jerk reaction to a new position or finally or getting into a place of leadership is to just change everything. This is what we want to do. This is how we're going to do it. And this is just the way it is, right? And there's that temptation. But we really felt like the Lord was saying, I want you to get things in order because then I can build on that foundation. And so he wanted to bring alignment to the hearts of the people of the church with his word and that his promises are true, that, that he's building a people of faith that hear God's word and live it out. And so there's an alignment there. There's an establishing that he wanted to happen in, in the hearts of the people, in, in, in our leadership, uh, but then also even in our property, that there's an establishing that he wants to do for our church and then health. As we do those things, as the alignment is brought and as he establishes us, how many of you guys know, that produces health. Yeah. That produces a healthy environment and healthy atmosphere where God gets to do what he wants to do. Let me tell you, in an atmosphere of unity where things are aligned with the heart of the Lord, that's the atmosphere that we're looking for. That's what we want because that's where his blessing comes. That's where the anointing flows. And that's where we see God do things that are just it blow our mind, the supernatural. That's where it happens when we're in alignment with what he's asked us to do. Yeah, we really felt like the year was about alignment. So um, that it, I, I wrote the alignment was foundational so that the anointing can flow without hindrance, right. that the anointing could flow without hindrance. And that, again, isn't just Jay and I. This isn't just a Jay and Susie thing here. Gosh, we are called to equip the saints, which are you guys. And so we want to come to a place that our church would be a place where the, the Holy Spirit could have his way and anointing can flow and, and we could see things move. The Chapel Valley I see is what we want. It's not just words, but we believe that that's what he, he wants to do. And if we notice, health is different than balance. We're not looking for balanced life here. We're looking for health. And those are two, diff two different stories. And so we, we believe that it wasn't that he wanted to bring balance to the church. No, he wanted to bring health to the church. And so if you know when you're in, in pursuit of health, things are going to actually look a little off balance and off kilter to get things back into alignment. And so um, establish, uh, establish health and alignment. Right, right. And so um, we, as, as we were praying about it, there were some key ways that we felt like the Lord wanted to do this. And this is kind of what our attention has gone over the last year, in, in addition to our services and our discipleship and our ministry opportunities and our teams. We, we, be, we believe that the things that we were to be about, how, how he was going to bring alignment and establishing and health, it was through finances, pastoral and ministry leadership, membership, discipleship and ministry involvement, and property. Those were the ways that we were to be about the aligning and the establishing process. I just want to go over just a couple of things real quick. The first thing that we felt like we needed to address and to get in order was our finances. Um, I just want to go over just some changes that have been made over the past year and just the difference in our overall percentages. Um, and can we just, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about this and I've been dying to share this with you guys. But our giving from a year ago increased from 5% to 10%. 
from one year ago, we are now giving away 10% of all the, all, all, the, all the money that is given. So that is the tithe. And we we're, that was the non-negotiable. We have to get 10% out uh, and be giving to our, which we give to Foursquare Church. And so we are a tithing and giving church. Um, our staff, uh, the, the percentage decreased from 80% to 52%. And our goal is to get the, the staff payroll down to 45% in 2017. Uh, we want to get that overhead clear. We want to get that out of there. Our savings increased from 0% to 8%. And so now we not only do we have our needs met, but we are now saving 8% of the money that comes in. Our goal is to increase that to 10% for 2017. Our, our ministry, the amount that went to ministry, outside ministry, ministries in the church and all that, increased from 2% to 14%. And so now we are, we are, we believe that was a necessary change that we need to be pouring the resources into the ministries that God has called their church to be about. Our goal for 2017 is 15%. And then building in property, uh, that includes expenses like lease and the, for being here and rent includes that. So that was at 13%. We have increased that to 16% uh, because we want to be putting away for the property. That's just, it's just a matter of time. I'm just telling you, it's just a matter of time. Our goal is 20% in 2017. And so we want to get see that increased. And so the, can we just thank, thank the Lord for that? Um, the other thing was uh, to uh, also the financial procedures. Um, as, as you know, we have a new treasurer, uh, Micah Herr. Um, she has taken uh, the treasurer responsibilities and has brought some kind of some new tools to, to that ministry, uh, QuickBooks. I know a lot of us have heard of that. We're, we're brand new to that. Like, that's just a new thing for us. And so she's brought us into that. And how many guys know it's nice to know where your money is at any point? Like, how much do we have here? And how are we doing there? Or where are we negative? We can ask that in an instance, and so that's awesome. And so we've, uh, we've utilized some better practices, some better processes to track expenditures, um, additional accountability, more visibility of the finances. And our goal, honestly, is to hold up to any government audit or any, anything that they would ask of us that if they come to us, we can immediately just give them over the books and they can see it and see that we are in good standing. Amen. Um, the other thing that we felt like we needed to get in order was our pastoral and ministry leadership. How many of you guys know the pastors and the, and the leaders that we've introduced this, this morning? Those aren't just positional titles, right? Those are people that, that are called by God, and we believe that have been called to be partners of this church. And we wanted to see them become activated. And, and we believe that we, we're just getting started on this, but that there is a call and a plan that he has for each person's, each pastor's life, that we want to see them step into the full ministry that God has prepared for them. Amen? Amen. I did want to just quickly do, go over this. Uh, we have our current church structure. Can we do it? No. Can we, no? No. We're oh, man. Well, there it is. He'll, he'll, it's there. What okay. we'll do is we will leave this up for the end of service, and if you have any questions, you can just ask us. It's pretty self-explanatory. We're not going to go over it, but you might notice that there is, there's, can we just first, oh my, look how many gaps me. there aren't. Look yeah. how much is filled, right? There's a lot of things that are set in place. And then we have gaps. As we did this, we realized, oh, we have some holes in how things are laid out and the things that need to be accomplished. And there's people doing things that they shouldn't be doing, and there's people that are doing things that, are, that they should be doing, but there's people that aren't doing some things at all. So be praying that our, that our leadership continues to get solidified and that, that we get the right people, not just people. We don't just want people to fill a position. We want the people that the Lord has, has set apart for this. And so those, those bottom parts where just like young adults, J12, those are things that as we grow, that we, we feel like we'll grow into campus development. So those are things that are non-existent that we feel will be existent mm -hmm. at some point. Yes. Uh, membership. That was another one of the things. That's why we're having this right here. At the end of the service today, you guys have an opportunity to become members and partners of what God's doing here at the church. And so we're going to give some cards out, um, and we're going to go through those, and we're going to invite you to partner with us and to join us. Uh, discipleship and ministry involvement. How many of you guys know that there are endless treasures available for us to discover? Isn't that true? Yeah. And there's a lot that he wants to show us, and we believe that discipleship is the key to this church becoming the church that it needs to be. We believe it's key. If we're not about discipleship, if we're not about growing and raising up others, we're not going to actually inherit the things that he's prepared for us. 
And then the final was property. Uh, the property, we've talked about the property prayer team. We've talked about just uh, some of the, the, the offer that we, we put in. We talked about how it's just a matter of time. How many of you guys believe that? And so we don't want to just write that off and just put that off to the side and the Lord will do it when it's time. How many of you guys know we have to take possession? of the property. There's, there's things that we have to take possession of. And so I wanted to just real quick in Judges chapter 7, this is a, this is a word that the Lord gave me, and this is a story about Gideon. How many of you guys remember Gideon had an army, right? And there was a battle that he was to fight, and it was, it was the favor was looking good. He had a lot of guys on his side, and, and, and the, uh, the temptation is, I'm going to win this for the Lord, right? But then in in Gideon, I'm sorry, Judges chapter 7, starting at verse 2, it says, The Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. And so there was a temptation that, that they could go fight this battle, but they wouldn't really give the glory to the Lord. They would hold the glory for themselves because it was the might of their army that won the battle. And we read that Gideon took the army down to numbers and numbers and numbers. And then finally the Lord said, you're good. There's about 300 men. And he said, you're good. Now go take possession of the land. And in verse 9, he says, it happened on the same night that the Lord said to him, Gideon, arise, go down against the camp, for I have delivered it into your hand. How many of you guys know the Lord's calling us to rise up and to go take possession of what he's already prepared and given us? Amen. And so they go, and he gets things in order. And I, this, is the, this is the verse that stood out to me, and I believe this is what the Lord's asking us to do. Verse 21, it says, And every man stood in his place. Every man stood in his place. All around the camp, and the whole army ran and cried out and fled. Verse 22, When the 300 blew the trumpets, the Lord set in every man's sword against his companions throughout the whole camp, and the army fled. The enemy army fled. Let me tell you, and I believe this is what the Lord's saying. When every man gets in their place, your enemies will scatter. This isn't about us just doing what we can do. This isn't about us just using the resources that we have that are convenient. I don't know about if you saw this, but in the vision it says, prayer that gets results, prayer that money, that gets results that money cannot buy. How many of you guys know this is about what the Lord wants to do, about him being glorified? That's right. And that the odds shouldn't look like they're in our favor. And so that there's things that the Lord wants to do, and he's calling us to get into place, to get aligned, to become established, to get rooted, to get grounded, to grow in our understanding of who he is and the things that he's prepared for us. And as we do that, we'll see our enemies scattered, and we take possession of the land and the promise that he's prepared. How many of you guys want to take possession? Do you guys receive that word today? That was a whole sermon in like 10, two minutes. Come on. Okay. So we are excited we are anticipating great things, and we have just one more thing and one more question that we think you guys might have a question to. Let's go ahead and play that video.
we're going to ask the ushers to um, pass out these cards. And um, again, we're going to ask, if this is your first time here, you just need to check. I'm, I'm new here. That's good. But we ask that you fill it out completely. Um, and so on the back, it just says, um, becoming a member. So by committing to membership, I agree to, one, actively follow, actively follow Jesus Christ and the teaching of the Bible. And that's so important, right? We, we know that that's true. Uh, to pray as a member that you would pray for our church and church and leaders to attend services regularly to be involved in ministry to consistently tithe and follow God's direction to give offerings such as missions building fund etc to be a part of church work days events and special needs whenever possible look at that we have church work days in there we don't have a church building but pretty soon we're gonna have church work days and you're saying yes to helping out it's if you become a, a member. matter of time um Seven, uh, number seven, to plan to attend annual membership meetings, to be informed about church businesses and finances, participate in the election of church council members, and discuss seasonal ministry opportunities. Number eight, to make an effort to attend other member meetings if we have any. And so if you say yes, you would check yes, I agree to uh, member commitment. Um, yes, I have committed my life to Jesus Christ and trust in his death on the cross and resurrection, that no good works, um, no good works for the resurrection not good works for my salvation sorry and then yes i will support the mission vision standards and beliefs of chapel valley and then you can sign it and you can date it today is october 2nd i'm um, on the front side if you have any testimonies or prayer requests we still want to make sure we get in there and then if you'd like to get involved on the front side it just says yes i'd like to get talk about how i can join a ministry team and um and then we will talk to that so we're just going to ask that you would fill that out for us if you um if you agree to that, if you are already a Chapel Valley member, if you could just check that box again, that would be really great um, for us. But still mark off the I agree or yes, the yes, I have agreed to the member commitment. So please renew that if you are already a member. Um, and really what we're asking today is that you partner with us. Yeah. That you partner with the church and the things that God has prepared for this church. And how many of you guys know that we, we only get one shot? at this thing called life. We only get one life to live. And I, and I don't know about you, but when I get before him, I want, I want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. And so let's come together. Let's be a part of what God is doing and, and, and see God just some, do supernatural, amazing things because we stepped up and we said, I'm going to do my part. Yeah. Amen. And so um, let's go ahead, and if, you, if you're still filling that out, that's great. You can turn, I'm sorry, you at, um, as you're exiting, there will be ushers. You can just plop it in there. Um, you could put that as well as your um, Give God a Year if you re redid that. Um, which, whichever it is, you can just go ahead and put it in the um, offering plates is where we will collect them. And again, they'll be at both doors. Yeah. So look, can we just do this? Can we just stand together, and we're just going to close our time with some prayer? Thank you guys so much for sticking with us. Um, we consider it a privilege to be uh, pastors here at Chapel Valley. We consider it a privilege to have you a part of our family. And we don't say that lightly or because that's the right nice thing to say. Um, we say that because it is the absolute truth. Yeah. We love you guys. We do. And we're so excited for what God has in store for you, for mm -hmm. each one of you. We're so excited. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word that you have spoken to us today. We thank you for the privilege and the honor of being a part of what you are doing. Some of us may have gone, been going through life, and some of us have been, been living a life that is distracted. But, Father, I pray that you would strengthen us to be the people and the church that you've always dreamed of. Lord, that we would make it about you, that we would give our hearts to you, that we would give our lives to you, that we would lay down personal ambitions and say, Lord, it's all about what you are doing in me and growing me into the man or woman of God that you've called me to be. And so, Father, we say that we are going to do our part. We say that we are committed. We say that we are expecting great things, not because of the planning or the, 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 the success of the, the Vision Sunday, but, Lord, it's because you are the driving force. Yeah. You are building your church. And Lord, so, Lord, we honor you. We give you all the glory for every life that has changed, for every salvation, for every healing, Lord. It's about you and what you've done for us. And so, Lord, we give you the glory today. And, Lord, we, uh, we open our eyes, Lord, to all the great things that you have in store for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.